This conference will now be recorded. So today's session is also going to be the continuation of yesterday's session where we were discussing about the different type of operators and where and all we can use the operators also we were seeing. So far I was explaining about uh, arithmetic operator and uh, compound assignment operator, increment or decrement operator and relation uh, operators also. So there are few other operators available. We won't use it uh, uh, frequently, but still it is good to know like what are the different type of operators available so that uh, we can use it if in case if we come across in future, it will be easy for us to use it. So uh, let's give a few more minutes or she need to join. By the time I will share my screen and keep it ready. Let's start. Uh, it's not joining. Anyhow, I turned on the recording so uh, you can watch it later once he joins back. So today the operator which we are going to discuss is bitwise operator. Uh, you, you are not audible. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Then I will uh, start uh, explaining the concept. Sure. Is my screen visible? Uh, not yet. Uh, let me know once you're able to see my uh, editor, IntelliJ editor, so that I will start presenting. Yes, it's visible now. Okay, good. Thank you. So the operator which you are going to see today is bitwise operator. So we all know uh, whatever may be the numbers I'm typing like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whatever number I press in end of the day for a mission it's all zeros and ones. Though I type a number which is not zero which is not one it will convert that number as zeros and ones that is the binary format and that will be saved into the memory. So that is the usual process. So when I'm uh, doing some operations uh, like uh, OR operations and operations and all, how we are going to use a bitwise operator. This is what the one we are going to discuss now. I'm going to create one uh, new file itself, regular like class file. I'm going to create now. Let me open that. 
right click on your package then it will list down the options click on new why i'm insisting is there are some shortcuts also but you should know how i am traversing from this package so that you can create so from today onwards i'll be giving small small hands on to you to start with i'll give very basic program only but once you feel comfortable we'll use a, a regular full fledged program as a, a daily hands on experience at least 5 10 minutes if you spend you will feel comfortable that is the main idea behind this hands on experience again i'm really insisting it is not compulsory or it is not something like you have to do because it is not your regular uh, school uh, uh, thing okay if you are able to do it please do if you struck somewhere also no problem you can ping me i can guide you on that even though you are not able to do even after my guidance if you still feel that it's good like you can do and show me also i'm ready to do it that is a regular process we do follow so now i'm creating the bitwise operator class Once it is created, I'm creating one uh, main method. So inside this only, I'm going to demonstrate how things are all going to work on a bitwise. So for this, I'm going to first tell you how these operations are going to work. Then I will take you on the regular thing. Okay, so there are four things we call it as bitwise operators. One is this unsymbol, this ampersand means it's an unsymbol in Java language, and pipe symbol, and you have something called the cap. Okay, in your uh, keyboard, you can see number six, right? Just above the number six, you can see a cap symbol and a tilt okay so uh, the tilt is again uh, next to number one you have a key the very first key in your uh, uh, symbols right so that is the four operations we are going to use for this bitwise operator so this four only and pipe cap and tilt so now i'm going to run a program straight away then i will explain how this actually worked nine and 12 so i'm writing a code like this and i'm executing the code let's see the output then i will explain how this is actually going on because yesterday i was explaining something called uh, uh, a greater than b a greater than or equal to b so some combinations and all i was trying yesterday but now i'm going to tell even with some numbers how these comparisons can happen if you look at this is giving me an answer call 8 it is nowhere related to the one which i typed i am using a bitwise und operation that is the ampersand means it's und operation so bitwise und operation when i perform it is giving me an option call 8 how it is performing uh, let me explain the logic behind it very first thing is as i told you this 9 will be converted as binaries like zeros and one right the equivalent of 9 the binary format is 1001 0, 0, 1. to see this answer you have, what you can do is open the browser and in your browser you can type convert a decimal to binary once you type it the why i am telling is already i have shown you in the previous example i told you so just i am revisiting the topic now open your browser type like decimal to binary converter then it will open a screen in the screen if you type 9 the binary equivalent it will give on the other way it is a mathematical calculation only if you keep on divide this 9 by 2 what is the quotient what is the remainder you are getting that will form this one so it's a mathematical formula only converting a decimal to binary so the binary equivalent of the decimal number 9 is 1001 next thing is i was using a, a numeral called 12 right so the binary equivalent of 12 is 1011 one yeah thank you so this is the one so what it will do is i am using a 
and operation the and operation is nothing but this is again uh, in your physics or uh, in your school days itself you have learned this zeros and ones are there right if both the things so from this uh, this is your uh, uh, ones place tens place hundred place and your thousands place this is your numerical uh, places right the place value of each and every digit so first it will apply the and operation between these two one and zero so the logic of the and operation quickly i will uh, tell it this is not a java but still uh, i feel that uh, it is good to know it is the general uh, and operation and gates and or gates would have studied in your uh, physics classes so we are revisiting that same topic i'm sharing one ppt This is for a boolean, but the same logic will work here also. That's why I'm using the same slide. If you look at this, this und operations, I'm using two different operands as A and B. In our case, let's take the zeros and ones. Okay, zero, zero. If both the ones are zero, then my answer will be zero. If both the ones are one, then my answer will be one. If any one of them is 1 also, my answer is 0. So, the final thing is, whenever you come across both the digits are 1, then only my output would be 1. If any one side is 0, either the left, the top, uh, the A or the B, any one is 0, then my answer would be 0. This is the condition for the bitwise and operation. So, that's what we are going to see it in the example. my IntelliJ, I am going to run the same algorithm. So, the very first thing is I will start from the end. So, any 1 is 0. So, the top one is 1 but the bottom one is 0. So, my answer would be 0. Similarly, both the sides, the, the top one and the bottom one, both are 0. So, my answer would be 0. Okay. Then, the third digit here the bottom one is 1 but the top one is 0 so my thing will be 0 similarly top one and bottom one both are 1 so my answer is 1 once you have the same thing you have to do open the browser and type binary to decimal conversion so i have a binary value of 1 triple zero the decimal equivalent of this number is 8 that is what it is showing me as a output. If you see at the bottom in my console, it is showing as 8. So, this is how the bitwise operator is working. So, it will do the comparison. It will do the und operation at the bits. Each and every bit it will apply. It is not like on the overall number. It will first convert the decimal to binary. And if the each and every bit, it will do the operation. Then it will again convert the binaries to a decimal and it will show the output like this so this is the logic for this and now the next example so let me explain the or operations using the table again or operation is almost same but with different options what it is doing in our operations if i have 0 0 on both side that time alone my output will be 0 in all other cases if you look at this the row number 2 3 4 and all everything is showing as 1 1 1 why it is showing 1 1 1 because it is having any one side the value of 1 that's why it is showing us 1 1 1 the difference between and and or operation is again it is bitwise and this is not the regular and i will cover the regular and operation also this is bitwise and so first it will convert my decimal to a binary and it will do the bitwise operation there then it will convert the binary to decimal and that decimal value only printed on my screen and or operation means any one side should be a one okay either the 
first one or the second one any one should be with the one then i will get a answer as one if both the sides are zero then my answer is zero and next this cap one is nothing but uh, this is or XOR, okay, this AND, OR and XOR, these are the gates, uh, these are the logics we used it and uh, here the logic is like this, if both are 0, then the answer is 0, if any one is 1, the answer is 1, but if both are 1 also, it is 0, so this is the difference between the OR and the XOR, so same thing we can apply, you can take the same number and apply the XR, this cap symbol is the XR, you can apply and you can see it. So next to one is AND operation, AND operation sorry, this is NOT operation, NOT operation is nothing but this NOT gate, if you enter something called 0, it will print 1, if you enter something called 1, it will print 0. So that is what is happening in the logic which I shown you. So for your explanation, I was showing something like the straight values 9 amperes and 12. But in the real world, usually it will be assigned to some variables like int a equal to 9, int b equal to 12 and in this place, we will use a bitwise operation of b. So when you do like this, you can exactly compare the way I have shown in the PPT, right? Exactly you can compare. The same thing will happen. 1, 0, 1, 1. If you do a OR operation, the answer would be different. It, because in OR, any 1 should be 1. It's not like both the sides should be 1. If either A is 1 or B is 1, I will get an answer as 1. If you look at the bottom, I have received an output of 13 because I have applied a OR operation here. Yeah, got it. So, uh, can you save the PPT whatever you shown uh, over the email or something? At the end of the training, uh, we will do it, Ranjit. PDF will share. Okay. okay. Next thing is... Uh, Boolean operator exactly the same but I am going to change only the zeros and ones with the true or false same screen if you look at this I was using something called uh, zeros and ones right here I was using 0, 0, 0. This is for bitwise operator. In the Boolean operator, wherever there was 0, I replaced that with false. Wherever there was 1, I replaced with true. Only it is like true or false. Instead of 0, I was using false. Instead of 1, I was using true. That is the difference between the bitwise operator where 0, 0 equal to 0 and in the boolean operator where false false equal to false everything is same but instead of zeros and ones we will be dealing only with the true or false scenario because boolean means i told right either true or false only these two things it will accept all other things it will throw an error the same example we can use for our uh, demonstration i'm not creating a new file for this because the same file i'm going to modify for the uh, Boolean operator. So here, okay, I will create a new file. No problem. Boolean operator. So here what I'm going to do is the data type should be boolean, boolean a equal to true and uh, boolean b equal to false and I'm going to use the AND operation between a and b. So what I told for AND operation any one side sorry uh, both the sides should be one 
that is both the sides should be true then only i will get the answer as true otherwise i will get false only right same thing i am going to run it now also so i made one as true another as false so obviously i know the output i will get the answer as false because both the sides should be true then only i will get a result as true for the and operation you can do the same thing for or operation now i will change it as or now and i am running the or the expectation is different any one is true i will get a output as true so the value of a is true so obviously my output is true so this is called boolean operator this is you will use to an extent but bitwise operator we won't use but uh, to explain the boolean operator i was taking the bitwise operator example also but in real time we won't use a bitwise operator much the next operator and the final operator is uh, your logical operator okay so logical operations means it is exactly like your uh, bit operator but here you will be using combination of few things the other name for this is short circuit logical operator or you can say logical operator also in short okay so what they are doing is in the online shopping app they are giving a discount only for the teenage people so what they are saying is who are all there as our user only for the teenage people or only for the 2k kids we are planning to give some offers whatever they are purchasing when we are uh, giving the final uh, product we are going to send them some greeting cards or we are going to offer them some 50 rupees uh, discount in their final price so some offer if they are planning to announce for the specific set of people for discussion i took uh, the age limit okay for only for the teenage people we are planning to do it so 13 to 19 they will have some discount so that is what they are saying in that case is what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take an example of int a equal to 12. say this is the age of a person so i didn't cover the uh, conditional statement if and else so far usually it is good to explain that uh, a logical operator with the example of if and else as i didn't cover it yet i am going with a simple example now but when i cover the conditional statement if else if and uh, nested if and all you can easily correlate what the need of this logical operation for now i am taking a simple example so here i am saying if a is greater than 12 and so here also i'm going to use the and operation like the bitwise operator but there i was using only one ampersand symbol but here i'm using two ampersand symbol that is the difference between the bitwise operation and the logical circuit operation so one condition is if a is greater than 12 and a is less than 20. so if the a is nothing but the age if age is greater than 12 and if age is less than 20 then i am going to announce some discounts uh, uh, discount to the particular user this is what i am going to do so already i have set some age so what is the age i am expecting if say anybody falls under the age limit of 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 if they fall under this age limit then i am going to give them some special offer so I'm going to run it. So what it will do is here we are combining two things for our discussion. That is, first thing is I'm using an under operation. Under operation means what it will do. Both my sides should be true. Then only my answer would be true. So first it will check this condition. Is the age greater than 12? No, it is not greater than 12 because I'm using the age of 
12 itself. So this is equal to 12, but it is not greater than 12. So this side, my very first condition, what I will get? I will get a false here. It is false. Then ampersand of is age less than 20? Yes, because the value of age is 12 and 12 is less than 20. So obviously it is a true. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply a and operation here. If you look at this, I'm not converting anything. Usually in the bitwise, I was converting the 9 and the 12 as the binaries and I was doing some bitwise, right? Here you are not doing anything like that. Directly you are cross-checking that with some value. That's what you are using the relational operator. That's what you are doing with the relational operator. Greater than symbol and less than symbol you are used. And here it is false. Here it is true. So for me to get it true, both the sides, this and this should be true. But in this case, what has happened? Only one side is true. That's why I got a output as false. Uh, yes, got it. But a uh, logical operator or a bitwise operator, I mean, no. Uh, still, I have a confusion in logical operator and bitwise operator. Why we are using double uh, ampersand and we are getting the same mm -hmm. result? It's okay so if you look at this this bitwise operator is there right here mm -hmm. i was converting this number into a binary mm -hmm. like 1001 and this b as 12 double one zero zero and among these i'm doing bitwise and operation each and every bit i'm comparing the 10th place, what is happening? The 100th place, there is some uh, data, right? What is happening? Each and every digit I'm comparing. But in the case of logical operator, I'm not converting this value at all. This 12 and all, I'm not at all converting. I'm directly checking whether this 12 is greater than 12. And mm -hmm. this 12, the age is less than 20. Between this false and true only, I'm applying the and operation. Got it? Okay. This is logic. Mm -hmm. You are doing a logic here. Some logic comparison you are doing. It can be a greater than symbol. It can be a less than symbol. It can be equal to, not equal to. What are the relational operator I was explaining yesterday? The same thing. You are, you are applying a logic. Then with the derived answer, you are doing an and operation here. But in the bitwise, you are not applying any logic at all. You are simply converting this number into a binary and binary means what? Bits. You are converting this as a bit and each and every bit you are applying the AND operation. That is the difference between bitwise operation and the logical operator. Logic you are doing. To differentiate that, you are using two ampersand symbol here. But in the bitwise the operator, you would have used only one ampersand. That is the difference between these two. Why I'm insisting is, if in case, in your debugging session, if they use a simple, uh, single ampersand means, they are doing a bitwise operation. If they give a if condition with a double ampersand means, they are using logical operation. So you should know the difference between these two. Okay. And next thing okay. is, not only this, like now you can add like here, if usually what we will do is we will do the comparison for now i'll tell with any after if condition i will explain so what we will do is we have something called if condition so we will use this code inside the if condition something like this and we will say that oh if this is true if the answer is true they will give some output like teenage user Something like this, some message for discussion. I'm typing some message, but usually what will happen is uh, you are in the category, so we are giving some discount. There are some other cases also if you don't meet the age criteria of 18. Let's take an example of YouTube and YouTube Kids. So once you log into the Google account, like it will ask you your date of birth and it will determine your age. There are some certain app, it won't allow you to log in. By calculating your age, it will say that for your age limit, this is not acceptable. This is not allowed. So how it will do? It will calculate the age for the particular app. If the age limit is 18 or 19, 
only that user it will allow the other user it will say that you are not supposed to use a thing okay that is what it will do so here in not teenage user so as we are using double ampersand for and uh, operator so can mm -hmm. we use the same way like or op uh, or operator double pipeline or uh, zor operator yes or yes here i'll change it i'm saying that either they should be greater than 12 or they should be less than 22 i should give some uh, discount in that case also you can do our operation means any one side should be true right so here it's true because the first condition is false but the second condition is true any one side is true so the output is true so for our operation you have to use a double pipeline only two operation double ampersand and double uh, pipe that is uh, r and n only two things are there for logical operator okay. so these are the operators So next important topic, I see that why it made Java popular in the early days because of this concept which we are going to discuss. Even before going on to the topic, I want to cover one small thing. This you will get it in your um, interview. Okay. So though I was telling all these operators, operands, blah, blah and all, there are some criteria, there are some methodologies it will follow to give importance to the operators i will quickly share the screen where my priorities are all defined first i will show an example every operator has a priority i was discussing so many operators right it is not like i will be using only one operator in my program i may end up in doing multiple operators in the single statement here itself you can see relational operator is there and the logical operator is also there in the same statement similarly you may get a chance of using more than one operator in a single statement itself if that is the case which operations will be done first which operator will take the priority that's what the one we are going to discuss for example i have a variable called inta and um, int b so two variables i have and uh, if i have a third variable called int c which has a statement like this a star b minus 10 slash a some statements like that if they give you can see there is a multiplication operator subtraction division three operators are there so how it is going to get me the output that is what we are going to see because your output will vary if you perform the multiplication and then subtraction and then the division your output will vary if you perform the subtraction then division then your multiplication because different things will come right for example i am performing this subtraction first b minus 10 so 25 minus 10 is 15 and that 15 multiply by 10 is 150 and this 150 divided by a that is 10 means answer is 15 this is one way of answer for example i am running this multiplication first a star b so 10 into 25 is 250 250 minus 10 is 240 and this 240 divided by a a is nothing but 10 so 240 divided by this 10 will give me an answer of 24 so i was a i can get two different output based upon the execution of the statement if subtraction is done first the output will be 15 if multiplication is done first the output would be 24 so based upon the operator which is performed first i may get a different output but i cannot decide anything right so there are some priorities which is already set for each and every operator that's what i'm going to explain now if you look at my screen it is showing you the clear-cut data 
in your statement if you have multiple operators in place the highest priority will go to your post increments post decrement that is for post fix you will get the highest priority then if your statement the second priority will be given to the pre increment pre decrement operator the plus plus and minus minus will take the very first priority the next priority will given to your operations like this multiplication division and modulo that's why in in our example there is a multiplication operator there is a subtraction operator but the very first execution will be multiplication because multiplication operator has the highest priority then only the addition or subtraction will come into picture then this relational operator then the assignment operator or the equal checking operator so not assignment it is this uh, relational operator only but the greater than and less than will take the higher priority then this equal to equal to not equal to comparison operations kind of thing then your bitwise operator will take the priority then only the priority will go to your logical operator your your ternary all these operators will be considered so this is the hierarchy of the operator priority so now i am going to execute the code and show what is the result i am getting how can i modify the result also in this example i will uh, print to the the value of c So the value it is showing something called 249 because as I told you the first priority will be on the multiplication. So what it will do 10 into 25 I will get the answer of 250 minus here it is 10 right. So 10 divided by the answer of A is 10. Yes, so basically uh, uh, here it's using the board mass rule, right? Yes, so again, again this 10 divided by 10, so next priority after multiplication, the next highest priority is for the division. So 10 divided by 10 will happen, so the answer is 1, so 250 minus 1 equal to 249. That was the answer I'm getting. But what I feel is, I want to change the order of execution. How can I do is, by using the brackets. So I'm saying that, don't perform the division first. Perform the multiplication. Perform the subtraction. Then finally, you do the division. How can I change the way or how can I change the order of execution is, by using a bracket like this. So it is saying the answer is 24 because 250 minus 10 is 240, 240 divided by 10 is 24. That was the answer I have received. Using the bracket, I can totally change the priority of the execution. Likewise, you can change the other way around also. Whichever way you want, you can change the execution by using the brackets okay so this is the priority of execution and the changing the priority so now with no delay i'm jumping on to the next topic called strings uh, as i told you because of string there are lots of new new things as introduced in java 
and it made the java developer work also easy comparatively okay with other even prior to java there are some operating uh, sorry there are some programming languages are there that has some challenges and those challenges were overcome because of this string concept using strings you can do so many things okay it will be used widely in your day to day development there may be a chance you may not use character in your program there may be a chance you may not use a boolean in your program but there is no way that you can do a program without a string because everywhere whatever the data you are doing somewhere or there on you have will be end up in using a string data type so this is the one we are going to discuss now string data type i have already covered the prim, uh, other primitive data types like int float and all that i kept it separate this is separate because i feel this is a separate topic we have to discuss in detail that's why intentionally i didn't cover that so first see some theoretical explanation about what is this uh, uh, strings and all then we will jump on to the demonstration part so very first thing is it's a important class because string array is part of all the classes that is your main method so first string means i'll tell you it is a series of character if you have a single letter like this you will be using something called char char uh, <coughs> alphabet equal to with single quotes you will use something like this if you have more than one character then you will be using the strings so this is the annotation or representation of a string within the double quotes you are doing why it is special means you know very well that your execution your jvm will look for a static method main method from that only your execution will start this is the kick start for all your execution that important main method will have a argument of string array which you can see everywhere it means that this is something special because the string array is part of all the classes that is in your main method and one important thing is string is a class it is not the regular one it is a class and it is a non primitive data type that is not the regular literals which we already discussed that int float um, double and all we have discussed right unlike that this is just class itself so class means what i will be explaining you now in a short after the regular class and object explanation you will get an idea we can really correlate these two points the string name equal to kumar i'm typing so as usual thing i will mouse over on the particular word and if you look at this it is giving the definition of the string here Okay, I'll open the file itself. It is saying it is a class. It is not a normal or simple data type. It is a class, and it has so many methods into it. Using the method, I can do all the regular operations which I need for my data manipulations and data handling things. So now coming back to our example, this is a this is special because it is a important class string is a important class <clears throat> next this is a non primitive so this is, you have to make a difference other things are all the primitive one this is a class that's why we are saying this is a non primitive data type and it is part of the 
a package called java.lang so whenever you have to use string you will be importing a class called java.lang and it is a collection of characters string is nothing but collection of character so here i have a confusion here you're saying a string is a class and also you are saying it's a non-primitive data type so but class and data type both are different right yeah right so that is the uh, beauty of this string you can create an object uh, for a string class and you can use it or you can declare the string in a simple way also that is the one i'm going to cover now why we are seeing a string as a class string as a primitive data type is i have shown you the one way of declaring a string like this string name equal to kumar i did it right i can do the other way around also like string student equal to new string so only thing is i have to import the okay so both the ways i can do and i can import the package also okay so package we import for any class right i mean here we are importing for string class yes you are right because there is an inbuilt class called string available that class i'm using for the regular activity so two ways you can declare your uh, string one is like this string name equal to kumar this is the literal way of uh, that is the normal uh, int a equal to uh, 10 int b equal to 20 we use right that is called that int literal the integer literal those things right similarly this is the literal way you are representing string using the literal format and this is you are using string in the form of class creating an object i create an object for the string and i'm using it so this is the two ways of using a string and these two ways both the ways are correct wherever you are in a need of using like this you can use wherever there is a use like need of using like this you can use i'll be demonstrating how this is used when you can go for a literal when you can go for the um, object way of uh, representation and main thing is why we are going for this why can't we go for the other that also we are going to discuss so object can be created without a new keyword so even though if i say like the string name equal to kumar a new object will be created for me and that object i can use but without using the new keyword that is the difference between these two things so let me quickly uh, share my screen and i will explain you how these things are all used in the memory okay If you look at the string, I have defined the string using two things. The outermost one is called heap memory. So memory, there are different types of there. Today we are discussing about the heap memory and string constant pool. Inside the heap memory only, you will have your string constant pool. And whenever I say string str1, anything you can use, string name equal to string student equal to anything you can use so string str1 equal to new string of hello 
when i say like this what will happen is whenever a new keyword you can see it means that it will reserve a place in my heap memory and in the heap memory it will save the value of hello and this hello will be pointed to this variable called str1 okay here it is like your object reference only it is doing so hello the value but it is pointed to str1 but in the next step what i did the str1 equal to unknown so what this is means so it is the literal way of representation so literal way again this is also it is going to create a new place in the heap memory but it is pointing to a different it is not replacing that's why there is a concept of mutable and immutable so string you cannot override so everybody think like that i have a value of hello it is there in the memory if i assign a new value this will be erased and it will be overwritten by the new value that is the assumption of everyone but actually in the concept of string that is not happening what it will do it will change the reference alone previously the str1 was pointing to hello but after the execution of the second line it will create a new place in the memory and it will assign the new value called unknown and it will change the reference of str1 from this hello to the unknown so going forward when somebody query this str1 if somebody print the str1 it will print the value of unknown only it won't point to the hello at all because there is no reference of this hello anymore the str1 is pointing to unknown this is the string representation using the new keyword but in the case of literal format that is string s equal to hi what will happen is whenever this is a literal representation of a string it won't occupy the heap memory it will occupy the string constant pool because the need of string constant pool is it is meant to only for the strings it is not going to do anything else all the strings if somebody else is in a need of this high word they can use a different variables also like string s2 equal to high if they say it then the both s1 and s2 will point to the same high only there is no a new memory allocation for the second variable this is the difference between the data in the heap memory the data in the string constant pool so string constant pool what we'll see first it will check whether it is a literal if it is a literal then it will have a entry so obviously it will say hey you are the literal representation so you have to go and occupy a space in the string constant pool again in the string constant pool it will validate whether that data which i am entering hi hello student how are you whatever i'm entering is there a copy already available in my string constant pool if there is a copy instead of allocating a fresh memory it will point the new variable also again i'm reiterating it is not going to remove the old reference the old object that is the old s the string s is pointing to high the new variable will also point to the high both the things will point to the same memory so that is the difference between the heap memory and the string constant pool it's a pool of data whenever there is a need of the data which is already available if any new variable is in a need they can come and use the pooled one they don't need to really create something new the same pooling concept only car pooling and other things and all you have heard it if some some car is going on that way where i have to come home like the same from my home to my office i'm planning for some drive if some car is going in the same way i can do the car pooling and i can utilize the same car to reach out to the destination similarly if something is already available i can reuse the data the particular uh, data and i can proceed with my development this is how we are doing so if you look at this string uh, s1 yes, so equal to yes i am yeah i have a question so in first case uh, can you please uh, uh, go back yeah so in first case uh, here there are two uh, keyword uh, it's storing in heap right one is hello one is anum so the recent one will be anum 
and hello will be uh, garbage collected after some time how it it will work yeah, exactly you are in line yes so what will happen is there is no reference for this hello right yes, so over right. a period of time when gc runs it will look for the d reference to object and it will saying like if nobody is referencing means it is ready for the garbage collection and it will remove this from the memory but the why we, we should not use it so performance testing relating advice what this is a problem creating factor until the gc runs until the garbage collection runs for example i'm creating so many objects i know i'm creating i'm dereferencing some point of time gc is coming into picture and it is going to create me some space but before gc come into picture if i create lots of object lots of dereference if i do means unnecessarily it will occupy the memory and will create a problem for the program execution for the actual execution if i am need of like 20 or 30 objects but i am don't have object because i already created a dereference 100 or 200 just i'm giving a number okay for understanding so already i have created 100 objects and i dereference that 100 object and i'm trying to create next 10 or 20 already my memory could have been used i have to wait for the gc to complete this activity or my program will stop or stuck there itself stating that there is no memory some memory issue has happened some error has happened unable to complete the execution so we should be very careful when we are dealing with this uh, uh, allocating a memory and dereferencing it gc will do the activity by itself but when it will do and how it will happen and all the, the time we cannot uh, clearly define and uh, decide on that yeah you are asking something so yeah so in this case uh, i think the second one is much better way to uh, know uh, exactly exactly the second way is okay. that's what that string constant pool come into picture it is giving me the efficient way of coding if i'm really in need of creating a new object i can go for it otherwise i can go with the string constant pool option itself because it is reducing the memory utilization that's why for string we have a special memory created string constant pool is meant only for the strings a special memory created for the spring data type even in a string constant pool if suppose uh, we have defined uh, 10 different strings uh, which are pointing to the same address of i right mm -hmm. uh, and he, here also after some time that particular space will get exhausted right and we need to do garbage collection over there um, yeah it will do because the string constant pool is also a part of heap only mm -hmm. Okay, inside heap there is a dedicator. That's why in the demo also I have covered this topic. You have a refrigerator in your home. In refrigerator you can keep anything, okay, which you want to store and eat. But there is a special dedicated place for dairy uh, products only to keep milks, butter, ghee and other things. There is a separate place available. So in that separate place you will place all your dairy products and you will preserve and you will eat it. It doesn't mean that I cannot keep that others. This dairy product cabinet is part of my regular refrigerator only. So it is part of the heap memory and uh, the string constant pool also will be cleaned over a period of time. But the logic of utilizing the memory is different between the external and the string constant pool. Here you will okay. refer to the same thing. So uh, there must be some uh, particular memory assigned for the SCP, right? A string constant pool. So what is the percentage ratio? Any idea? I mean, I just wanted to. Uh, I'm curious about that. So I am diverting. I from the think topic. that yeah. is not clearly defined. How much is there? It depends yeah. upon the machine where you are running. But percentage-wise, I don't think it is mentioned anywhere. And yeah, I'll okay. cross-check. If there is any reference, I will get back to you on this. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So these are the things, some small example we will cover here, the string S1 it was pointing to high and S1 if I change it to hello, a new memory will be created but in the literal way S2 equal to high means it is pointing here 
string s3 equal to java means it will first check because this is the literal way right so it will first check the string constant pool is there any entry called high if it is there it will point there otherwise it will create a new memory and the reference of s2 will point to high next the string s3 equal to java <coughs> It will check is there anything available if it is not available it will create something new in the last case string s4 equal to java it will check whether any reference is there if there is a data already available it will point to the same one it is not going to create something new it is going to point the same one so these are the different way of using the string the memory allocations and other things okay so with this i'm ending today's session because I'm planning to start a topic related to the uh, string immutable things and all. So that will be a, a lengthy topic. I don't think we can cover it in the next five, 10 minutes. So I will cover, uh, start it freshly in the next class. Any doubt in today's session? Uh, no, I'm good right till now. Yeah. So thanks. Okay, you're welcome. So uh, to start with today, I would suggest you nothing big nothing new uh, a simple hello world program i want you to write today okay so to to start with okay it can be very it's very basic okay nothing new either using editor are you planning to run it through editor or from online compiler no editor i mean i have already installed intellij okay fine then then simple then uh, this program it will give automatically then you can do one thing do the arithmetic operation this addition, subtraction, multiplication, division is there, right? So perform yeah. these four operations and with some simple print statement like uh, take two variables int a and int b with some values 10, 20, something like that and perform the arithmetic operation, the five operations I have explained, right? And print the output. So can you try this one? Because I want you to slowly get in touch. When I start the classes and objects and all, it will be a little bit tricky. So once you're comfortable with the editor, uh, it will be easy for you to do the little bit complex program. So keep a, just try it. If you face any issue, do let me know. We will sort it out yeah. together. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.